Today is August 13th, 2019. This is a meeting of the Cushion Board of Selectmen. All rise, please, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, let's start with a motion on the consent agenda and to approve the minutes of the April 23rd, 2019 uh, minutes which have been distributed. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the consent agenda including the minutes of regular session Board of Selectmen's meeting of April 23rd, 2019 as presented. And I'll second the motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. Um, we're going to skip forward in the agenda. We have a, a, a contingent from the uh, Department of Transportation. We're going to try to take them out of order. Um, but first of all, I want to I want to stick with the appointments. Uh, Dean of Brasser is here, and uh, Ms. Brasser is being recognized for being the Cushion Woman of the Year, and we want to keep that we want to keep that in order. And um, just first of all, I want to say that that um, we did recognize the Cushion Man of the Year earlier in the year, and we've been told that this was being taken care of outside of the Board of Selectmen. So. It was an unintentional oversight to not bring it in, and but we reached out and were told that it had been done. Okay. So my apologies for no that. That's, no. Ideally, we would have had you both in at the same time. Um, so you got this great plaque. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's lovely. Thank you. So in just uh, uh, standard times, uh, a cushion woman of the year in recognition of the things you've done to the library and the value you bring to the library and the community and. Uh, you were nominated and recognized, and I know there are, there are quite a few people nominated every year, and uh, clearly an honor to be uh, to be selected. It so is, congratul is. congratulations on that. Thank you so. very much. I appreciate it. Thank and you. And get a picture yes. with the Thank board you. of selectmen. Very well deserved. Thank get a picture you. with the board of selectmen. Would that be? Okay. With, with the plaque, plaque. With the plaque. With the plaque. Oh, with the plaque. Oh, okay. Of course. Sorry. Of course. Of course. She's going to rush away to serve us. Yep. Oh, we're all going. We're all going for yeah. it. Yeah. What flavor is nice Chocolate one? and vanilla. That's it. No strawberry. <laughs> no strawberry. <laughs> hot fudge. I'm not. Oh, we got hot okay. fudge. Yeah. Yeah. Camera. <laughs> oh, <my> camera. <laughs> Smile, frown, something. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. take two minutes yeah, go, to say go, sure, I just want to thank sure. a couple of people real quick because while I have your ears also um, when I was hired or when I applied for the position back in 2014 the uh, friends and trustees of the library had just been named the Accushion at Men and Women of the Year for 2014. And I knew that if they hired me, I was going to have to work really hard for those people because they had worked so hard to get a new library for this town. And a lot of them are here today, um, the, of the 2014 Men and Women of the Year, um, including Connie Preston, who is a retired Accushion at Librarian. She's a founding member of our friends group, and she is also a two-time Accushion at Woman of the Year. She nominated me for this honor and I'm thrilled that she's here today and I so appreciate um, everything they've all done to support me over the past four years and what I do um, I don't do it alone of course I've got an awesome staff the trustees the friends Dan Menard and Kathy Silva of the DPW who are sitting here are so good to our library Jim Merritt in the building department that library wouldn't be what it is without Jim Merritt and all the work that he did to restore that building with his crew um, it's such a team effort and I'm very proud to be part of it and I really thank you all this is lovely it's a huge honor and I look forward to seeing you scoops my screen tonight with us for our awesome young readers who in July of this year borrowed over 10,000 items for the first time ever at our library 10,615 <laughs> items from our tiny little library so great, thank you very much congratulations. thank you <laughs> Uh, uh, next up again, uh, we're not in order on the agenda, but I'd like to invite a representative from the Department of Transportation uh, here to make a pre presentation on the uh, on the Hamlin Street Bridge and what's planned there. So um, there's, a, there's a group of five from the Department of Transportation, so we'll uh, uh, yes. welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Select uh, okay. Group Administrator. Assistant. Um, my name is Alvin Ramirez. I'm from MassDOT. I'm the Bridge Project Manager for this project. The 
um, bridge replacement project for, for Hamlin Street over the Kushnet River. Um, in September of 2018, we had a design public hearing. In that hearing, we presented our plans and specifications. The plans indicated that we would have a sidewalk at the time. Um, consequently, after that, we met with the municipality's attorney, and she informed us that we would be infringing upon Article 97. As a result of that, we were told that it would take at least another year to, to put the project, to have the project go forward. And we elected to, as a result of that, we elected internally to remove the sidewalk from the bridge. Um, and that would provide us, what I'm being told now, I, the advertisement date as a result of removing the sidewalk would be May of 2020 with a, uh, a construction date in spring of 2021. But if we were to include the sidewalk, it would postpone the project even further out, maybe. I'm not sure, but maybe another year or so out, 2022-23. And the, the, what I'm afraid of is I don't want to lose the funding for this project. First, the further we push it out, more likelihood of that occurring. And I would like for that not to happen. With me today, I brought uh, Kirk Jurgensen. He's from our Cultural Resources. We have Rick Hebert from T.Y. Lin. He's our designer. Hung Pham from Environmental. Craig Sheehan from, is, uh, from our Municipal Right-of-Way Bureau. If you have any questions, feel, please feel free to ask us. Um, um, can yeah. I just, so what, how much more width would you need to sidewalks? But if I could have Rick Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So in order to add an additional sidewalk, um, we have to add another six feet to the width. For one side? So for one sidewalk, so 12 feet for two sidewalks. And there, there are currently on either end of the bridge, there's no existing sidewalk. So correct. we'd have a sidewalk into right. nothing. Mm -hmm. exactly. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is typical of a lot of the areas in town. Yeah. Um, so, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, Mr. Yes. Well, thank you all, first of all, for coming in. And um, finally, we're at the point of we're discussing reconstruction of our Hamlet Street Bridge. And I know it's been out there for several years. Um, we were able to be put up on the list. So I appreciate that. And I'm sure that the people of our community are gonna appreciate a new bridge over Hamlet Street Bridge, because it's, in my opinion, we've been, I've been receiving bridge reports for quite some time. Every year we receive a bridge report, and every year um, I'm quite familiar with the cracks and the blocks and the rocks and everything else. And it's, it's really, I think all of you folks can admit, it's, it's quite antiquated for uh, today's standards. So um, <clears throat> I wouldn't wanna do anything and jeopardize funding or timeline. So in my opinion, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with waiving the requirement of the sidewalk. And if there's any other, are there any other waivers? Actually, the, my one request is if you could send me an email, I mean, not an email, but a letter, a formal letter indicating that you don't want the sidewalk on the bridge. Well, we want oh. them. We're, <laughs> we're willing to live without them. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think would be what we'd say. Yeah. Okay. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, there's never been one. Right. Yeah sidewalk there when I was 13 years old I used to deliver newspapers down Hamlet Street so um, it is a very dangerous road it's very narrow in scope yes um, so I, I can't wait for the bridge to get done so that Mr. Minot our DBW directors here we talk about paving Hamlet Street because it's in dire need and possibly widening that road a little bit at the same time so to the standard what will be the width of the bridge is it going to be opened up a little bit more than what it is because it's extremely narrow so is it is the bridge with God rail to God rail gonna be a little wider than what's existing there now? The bridge with um, God rail to ground, God rail or curb to curb is gonna be 20 feet, which matches what the existing approach roadway is, and slightly wider than the existing bridges, because the existing bridges narrow up at the bridge itself, at yeah. the bridge proper, is by line. about a foot, a uh, foot and a half depending on which one of those three different structures that we're talking about. Sure. So it'll be slightly wider at the at the bridge location. Yeah. Yeah, the existing bridge feels very narrow. So what that's gonna replace it's gonna allow two cars to pass comfortably. Right. Try being on a bicycle over that bridge yeah. with those two cars are passing. Yeah. So it's it's extremely dangerous. Is, is there any way that is that the design and that's it, we can't widen that bridge another two feet while you're in there doing it now or is, is that it is the design to design and we're out no the issue the issue relative to widening of the bridge is 
that we either impact the Article 97 property, which are on both sides of the roadway, so no matter which way we were to shift it, we'd have an impact. Um, and we have sort of a pinch point on the south side of the roadway, there's an existing retaining wall that extends from the existing westerly bridge, the main crossing bridge, to the overflow bridge uh, mm -hmm. that's in the middle. That, that wa wall's been deemed historic. So um, it's a nice. So it can't, would end can't up be moved or can't be disturbed as a historic structure. That's correct. Okay. So to, to Mr. Gasper's point, is there a way to make the bridge forego the sidewalk, make the bridge as wide as possible without? But right now we're we're already we're impacting a portion of that historic wall. So any additional width is going to impact a longer length of the wall. Yeah, I didn't know. So what we're trying to minimize those those impacts. Yeah, when, when I talked about it, is you can have the pillars, we'll call them, to, for the bridge, the road to, way to rest on. You can come down and have the road wider, without impacting the actual footing where the bridge would sit on. So you've seen them before where they have an angle and they come down. So they're 20 feet wide at the top, but they come right. down to maybe 10 feet at the bottom. And the design can be done that way is without disturbing land on each side. That's all I'm asking. Well, the issue is not then with the bridge, which could certainly do that for the bridge, but then it's the approach roadway leading to the bridge. So you'd have that same width impact in between each individual structure. I see. So we're limited so, on how much we can even widen that road. Correct. Along that area or anyway. Right. That's correct. Without having a historic impact in that historic. Yeah, without going thing. through the hoops and yelling and screaming and speak to, but you know. I, I, I understand. It's just trying to make it as best as we can right. while we're here. I mean we we've, we've been waiting, I think we've been on the list for I don't know, ten years or better. So it's been a long time, maybe longer than that. I would say longer than that. Um, and I just want to make sure if we're gonna do it pound for pound, dollar for dollar, we're getting the best bang for the buck, um, and it's gonna fit the community instead of, we know that that's antiquated, outdated. I mean, you can't, that would never pass muster today. You would never build a bridge like that today, right? right. You probably stopped building bridges like that 50 years ago, right? right? So I'm just seeing if there's some leverage within that standard that we can vary away from without getting ourselves in trouble. Other comments, anything, Mr. DeRoche? Well, if we eliminate the sidewalks, what's the uh, process after that? What's a timeline that we can expect to um, our, our proceed with? Our advertising date would be uh, May of 2020. May of 2000. Project. To put it to bid? That's correct. And then you'd advertise it and put it to bid. And then it hopefully would um, construct it in the following spring, 2021. Wow. <coughs> it takes that long, the process. Yeah. It's, it's nice to, to finally replace that bridge and there's been severe weight limits on that bridge. It's, you know, as I, I was over there and looked underneath, it's kind of, you, you get some respect for the way that was built way right. back when and yeah. how they put those stones in place and built the structure that yeah. they built and it's held up for as long as it has. And, and they didn't have the machinery. So it's great we're replacing it and it's sad to yeah. see it go all at the, all at the same time. So, yeah. Mr. Chairman? And uh, what do you anticipate the time frame to be for the construction of the bridge? If it starts in May of 2021, can we anticipate six months, a year, a year, one year? Is that correct? One year. One year? Okay. So we're looking at May 2022 to uh, cut the ribbon. Right. <laughs> Great. Anything else? I don't, Mr. Chairman. Anything from Mascot? No. When you, when oh, you, motion, yeah. Is, when uh, you do the motion, yeah. could you allow Mr. Menard to sign for the town to permit the removal of the sidewalks from the plan? Okay, so the appropriate motion would be to endorse the mass stock request that the Hamlin Street Bridge be replaced without sidewalks. That's correct. And that Mr. Menard would sign uh, the appropriate documents on behalf of the town when, or signed a letter to that effect, or something like that. That's good. Is that okay, so all right? Did you get all that? So I'm not going to be able to say it again. Is that all right? Is that yes. All right. Make something up. Yeah. Um, motion. Motion. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
And although this is great fun, you don't have to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I've got the. Uh, oh, me? Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, thank you. So, um, going back in order on the agenda, um, under meeting mail, we've got a letter of resignation from Brian uh, Chopper, who is signed from the Agricultural Commission. Um, just want to uh, uh, thank uh, Ms. Chopper for her service to the town. I know she was a Krishnitz Woman of the Year last year, so. Um, just thank her for her service to, to the town and, and uh, unfortunately lose a, a good volunteer and I believe she's involved in some other committees and activities in the town continues to be so uh, thank you Ms. Chopper for your service to the town over the years yes thank you um, been an appointment at 410 with ECA solar yes good you here how's it going good welcome Jim Mayer Jim's in France. Okay. Yeah, thank you for having me. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Whenever, um, whenever you're ready. Yeah, thanks for having me, folks. I'd like to also thank Brian um, for his help through the process, and Jim has been instrumental as well, um, really over the last, I'd say, nine months in um, working this project through. But um, so. As we discussed last time I was uh, presenting to uh, the selectmen, we have been working with the town on creating a power purchase agreement, which is uh, virtual net metering through an off-site solar system that doesn't use any public land in the town. Um, it's completely sited on a private piece of property in Canton, rooftop solar, um, with some carports and through our proposal we'd be offering the town a 15 percent discount on the net metering credits generated at this site um, in working with kp law it was decided that the town of Kushnet would not be the host community of this project which sort of as we started that was um the initial discussion but um through the process, we decided that we would sort of steer away from that. Um, in this case, the town of Marshfield will act as host community uh, with Okushinet uh, receiving the balance of credits that Marshfield is not able to use. I'm sorry, we just, I just pointed yeah, something in the, in yeah. the agreement that I, I would, just had a concern about. But okay. I'm sorry, go ahead, please. Um, another, another thing that was added uh, since we last talked was we removed the floor price. Uh, so before there was a point in which if the cost of electricity dropped below a certain point, um, a cushion it would stay at that point. I believe that mark was uh, in the 10 cent mark, which is less than half the value of uh, current retail rates. Um, now through this new agreement, should that happen, there's there's no trigger or, or mechanism where uh, the town would ever be paying more for electricity than what it's worth. It'll always be paying 15% less um, than the credits that we're providing. Can you speak more on that? 15% <coughs> is obviously 15% of whatever rate mm -hmm. it is, right? <coughs> How does, what happens if the rate you're, you've got something in here at nine and a half cents, so that looks like where our purchasing is at? No, so that that was the initial floor. It was nine and a half cents. I, I couldn't remember it's if it was nine and a half or ten. So um, in the current agreement, the nine and a half is, is now out. Um, so it, it, in that agreement, I think the way that it reads, and it read last time we talked, um, it was a 15% discount or nine and a half, whichever is greater. Um, now it's just a 15% discount. So that nine and a half cent floor price that is mentioned there has been taken out so if power was um a penny you'd pay 85 percent of a penny and what what dictates the rate who dictates the rate department of public utilities or, you, or what you're generating at so um in massachusetts the way the way it works is you're you're still able to go out and seek competitive energy pricing which I believe you're mm -hmm. already doing. So you go out and you seek your own rates. Um, 
and you you find the best rate of electricity that you possibly can on the market. Sure. Um, that's in one bucket, and another bucket is our solar generating asset that sits in Canton. That is assigned a solar specific rate. It's called the in this case it's the A9, which is pegged to the small commercial rate. So our meter and our account generates credits, billing credits, at that A9 rate. So at the end of the month, we have a dollar amount. Um, and then what we do is we take that dollar amount and we apply it to your bill. So your rate of, your cost of electricity is sort of irrelevant in this scenario. You're getting the 85%, I'm sorry, you're getting the 15% discount on the dollars, the billing credits that we're applying to the time of cushion it bills. So, you know, if you've negotiated a 10 cent uh, rate of electricity and my rate of electricity is 20 cents, you're still, like, at the end of the day, it's just you're getting money off of the dollar, not money off of your rate. Mm -hmm. Just to know, but you, you'd estimated what this was going to save the town of the cushion potentially? Potentially, at minimum, $40,000 a year. At minimum. Mm -hmm. The numbers that they've estimated in the other towns, uh, they estimated very conservatively, and uh, uh, both the town of Weymouth and the town of Norwell public schools that I spoke to had achieved much more savings than originally guaranteed. In both cases, in the case of Weymouth, almost $20,000 more, and in the case of Norwell, almost $15,000 more. So I think it's a very conservative number to say it'll be only 40000 mm -hmm. So I would expect that you'll save a million dollars, today's dollars, over 20 years. That was on the, we did an analysis before when Mr. Matt was in, it was 50 grand based on 20 years, we came up with a million bucks, but now that the ratio's changed from 20% to 15%, so, so it drops it down. I'm saving now 40 grand a year. Right, yeah, you right, know, right. And then, but I, but I know that you're gonna do better than that. Sure. And um, so the other thing that we always wanna remember is that we are very successful at energy conservation in this town, and we have two projects on the agenda for both elementary and middle school to um, re-fixture the facility, which will get us some additional savings. So you combine this together with that, and the reduction in the school budget alone, which is our largest user of electricity, will be very significant. Does exist already, or is proposed? Uh, it's it will be built this year. Will be built, and so yeah. part part of what you got to do to justify it is to have customers for the electricity, and that's what this is. We should we we tend to build them whether or not we have the customer because we know that we'll find one. But but we are I mean um, we are customers yeah. for the right. Yes, exactly. Um, so another thing worth mentioning, I guess, off of Brian's point was we worked for a, a while with both Jim and Brian on creating what we felt was a very conservative approach for the town of Kushnet that would leave options open uh, going down the future. So um, we feel what we're offering is is definitely less than what the town could do, but this allowed this this allows you to sort of get your foot in the door, see that it's working. If you wanted to put new projects on future schools or future town properties, it still allows that possibility. And what Jim had really focused on with us was making sure that um, in signing this contract, it wouldn't prohibit a cushion it from um, taking advantage of future programs that the state might offer, whether it be through conservation or uh, on-site solar or you know whatever whatever the opportunity might be. Or purchasing solar electricity from one of our own town facilities. Mm -hmm. So we've already done <coughs> what this what this does for the board and for the town really. Is, is we've entered into and we're, we're assuming that we'll purchase up to so much electricity, right? Of our consumption that we use today, mm -hmm. what we've said is we'll take, we'll allocate a certain percentage of that consumption and we'll buy that from you, right? That's basically what this comes down to. We're buying net meter solar credits. So it's basically buying dollars for a 15% discount right. and then turning around and paying an electric bill with those discounted dollars. Mm -hmm. But that capacity allows us Correct. that flexibility. That's why we're, we're actually not out. buying enough meter solar credits to pay our bill That's entirely. Yeah. There's still capacity left. One right. reason we're leaving that capacity is we could save electricity, which could be done. And also this opens the door to say, okay, well, it worked with them, we can go back and buy more later. They'll have another project. Or there's projects being built in this town that want to sell us electricity as well. That gives us a capacity to do that. So 
we're leaving options open and we're even leaving the door open with them this does, this says we'll get we'll buy 28 percent of the electricity generated by the facility and my question to Mr. Mary is how does how does that line up with what we need? And he said that's minor. That's well well below what yep. we actually need. But we still so that would mean we have seventy two percent. That's twenty eight percent twenty eight percent there. Right, but we're buying twenty eight from them, that still right. leaves seventy eight percent seventy two percent. No, we're buying percent March we only two percent open for us to purchase somewhere else, we're correct? Twenty eight percent. Or reduce Mar Marshfield is buying <laughs> the additional capacity yeah. and they're the host community now. Mm -hmm. Um there could be additional opportunities to buy directly from them on the same project or they're in business they'll have another project we can go buy more if we want to we have we have two or three others right behind us that are very similar that we'll start building in the spring so you know there's there's plenty of other opportunity so and i, I think i'm going to ask this question i think you came in a while back in front of the board um if yes and they have to prove that no, I'm just, I'm trying to, your company is very small in nature as far as personnel. Yeah. So, and you've had a history when I looked at it, and this is, this goes back almost a year ago that we reviewed as nine months ago, so I'm just going back off of what I have in the back of my nugget over here is, um, you guys are a very small firm, and you've been in the business of developing these properties, and then you sell them off to bigger companies, or i.e. utilities, right? Um, so, the, that's um, something that you've done. I'd say that's how we got started that's not necessarily yeah. so what we're you might doing be taking now. a different business plan model now moving yeah. forward whatever so the case may be if that were to occur on this particular property that we're engaging to buy mm -hmm. um, solar meter credits from right yeah there's no there's no jeopardy in place there right no matter what they have to follow the contract unless they come back to the, the minutes of the original municipalities that are in the agreement and say hey we're the new owners we're changing things and at that point the town can actually opt out of the agreement if we don't agree with the agreement that they're pledging absolutely yeah. and I, I thought that's the way i read it i just want for the record for everybody at home that says well whatever if, if this were to happen yeah um, we're out we right. don't have to buy in in other words the agreement's with you if the agreement would follow if you were to sell a company to somebody else however if they wanted to change the agreement they'd have to come in front of the board and then we would ultimately have that decision to say we're not interested in doing business anymore at that arrangement so my read on the agreement is um, in that case the new company would either have to continue to honor the agreement that's been signed with the town correct or mm -hmm. seek your approval to change it and you have the right to say no it, it's a contract like any other contract All right, that's fine it, so no i just want to make sure that la the yeah. language never changed because there is a good chance that knowing what your firm's done in the past practice yeah. is that you've have sold properties off i've, I've done my research yeah. and it, it, i just want to make sure that we're protecting our people yeah it's our job the board selectors job right and the best interest act in the best interest of the people as a whole so um, it looks like town council's reviewed this whole document and gave the signature of approval right there's um one area uh, that i'm still reviewing with council but subject to that to the mutual satisfaction of the board um i think we have a we have a contract you can accept yeah i mean i'm, I'm happy to be supporting a, a green energy uh, project i mean it's what we it's what we as a community should be doing and and buying our energy from green energy generators so I'm, I'm happy to be part of this and if we can save money in the process that's good too yeah. so the vote would be pending successful contract of negotiations yeah. contract negotiations with ECA so it is the intent of the board selectly to sign the agreement would someone like to make that motion what he said what he said <laughs> <laughs> we're doing a lot of that now. is there a second to what he said no, I'll second what he said all right any further discussion all in favor aye I, I can I go yes. does this have to go back in front of town is this the one that goes back in front of town meeting for a vote what's the one that we just did at town meeting pilots pilot, pilot programs I'm sorry yeah. thank you the town meeting authorized you to enter into a contract to buy net meter solar credits for a period up to 20 years mm -hmm. so you now have that authority mm -hmm. I didn't know if this is the we have to take it. back in front of oh, that would be it's similar in the sense that it deals with the solar installations but it refers to solar installations in the town of Lucushna that are paying a pilot which is a payment in lieu of taxes right. versus the straight standard rate can I, can I ask him while we have yeah. one, one, one yeah. more question yeah. when do you expect this project to be completed for us to stop purchasing um I, I would estimate in probably Q2 of 2020 so by a year yeah, yeah. A little, a little less now, right? Yeah. so it would um 
I think we're in Q3, but um, it would, Eversource has to do their work once we've finished our work. And if there's one thing that I've learned in doing solar, and you can ask anyone that does solar. I've seen it being installed on people's houses and three weeks, four weeks later, they come in to do the inspection of them, make sure they're legit. And if I had three or four weeks from Eversource, I'd be thrilled. Yeah, so. you got commercial. Um, if, yeah, so that's the one thing I can't make promises on. That's fine. And I won't, I, I can control what I can do, but um, I can call and nag Eversource as much as I want. But at the end of the day, they control their schedule. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Dead battery, probably a good time to make an energy. You need a solar panel. I need a solar panel yeah. for this, yeah. There you go. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for coming in. Thank you. We'll be in contact tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Let's see if the computer comes back. We can continue that. So we'll have the next item on the agenda. Oh, come on in, gentlemen. Let's do it. Let's do it now. Let's do it. Now. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda is the discussion of town hall. Or our town hall hours um, and there was some materials distributed with the thank you thank you there was some materials uh, as you recall a year ago we modified the hours in the town hall the hours currently um, allow town hall to close at noon on a Friday and the exchange were open Tuesday night until 730 7, 7 o'clock um, and that was done a year ago on a let's call it experimental basis and we said we would we would try it out and come back together in a year to decide whether or not it was working and whether or not we wanted to continue and and it's time so um, close. there's a package that's been distributed with some supporting information um, including some traffic logs. These weren't kept continuously, it looks like, right? They seem to be a little bit sketchy. Well, yeah, between, de from the or between December 18 and May 19, nobody came in, so that. They lost interest, I guess. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> but there were, I mean, there were some activity logs that were kept for a period of time. There's some letters that are written. Um, okay, I got, my, I got my stuff back. There's some letters that are written in support of, of, of continuing and, um, there's been no hours, there's been no letters that they want to change it back. <laughs> yeah, nobody's written that says they don't like it. So so I guess, we, you know, as a group, we need to decide whether or not we, what we want to do, whether we want to make this permanent, whether we want to, thank you, whether we want to continue it, uh, continue the experiment, or, you know, what, what, how we should go forward with this. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go, go. Please. So I don't, I, the only thing I'm, I, when I voted against it, first go around uh, with the town hall contract, because I was in disagreement of a couple of different things, but as far as the town hall hour contract, um, hours went, the hours of operation, I, I'm still a bit confused on how we close on Friday, four and a half hours early, but we stay late, three hours. We cut the lunch. Tuesdays. We cut the lunch break. We cut the lunch back back. So instead of an hour, they're 45 minutes. I don't get it. We, so we lost an hour and a half of service in right. the meantime. But I took away 15 minutes every day for lunch. 15 minutes every day? For one lunch. day? Every day. So Monday through Friday? Monday, Monday through Thursday. Thursday. They only get a 45 minute lunch instead of an hour lunch. And that's from like noon to quarter to one? Whatever they, they normally stack. If it's an office with one person, the office is closed. If it's an office with two people, they stagger their lunch so that the office doesn't close. Um, we don't have any offices with more than two people, so um, mm -hmm. you know, the idea is to keep the offices open, open, open okay. as much as possible. So the hour lunch went to 45 minutes. Correct. The, the other thing, uh, Mr. DeRoche wasn't involved in that discussion. Mr. Cabral, you and I were. That's right. Um, I think that the, the other thing that we talked about was to provide the board with some information on whether or not sick time was being abused on Fridays or Tuesdays, vacation time was being used um, exponentially on Fridays and things of that nature. I don't know if we have any of that document. I can certainly give you the documentation, but there's nothing that seems to be outstandingly difficult. No, no no abuse occurred. No office was closed inordinately. Um, there was a stronger effort. Um, interestingly enough, um, it didn't change my work hours appreciatively. Um, 
and mm -hmm. there were many times that I walked through the building and still have department heads still in their office on Friday afternoon. Yeah, I'm, talk, I'm talking more so of, uh, you know, the abuse yeah. of um, no, you know, vacation be. time, sick time, things of that nature. We were going to be looking at that the Tuesday night thing, how many people are banging out and getting out of here early so they don't work late on Tuesday and still well, I was capture the early leave on Friday or and or the Friday was a little bit, um, the 11.30 closure to me was you basically indirectly double vacation time for our employees by doing that. So that was a little bit of a concern of mine I never well. really understood that argument. But in fairness, your point is well taken. There does not seem to be any more Fridays taken off before or after the, the closing. And I can document that for you and be delighted to do that. And as far as vacation time is concerned, they take the Tuesday and they sacrifice the Friday, so it comes out exactly the same. They're still taking Monday through Friday as a vacation, and it's still 35 hours. So that doesn't seem to be an issue. The sick time, and particularly the banging out on Friday, as you may remember, was an issue I went to the mat with the union. They cannot use their vacation time to skip out on Tuesday nights. Um, you know, every once in a while, some personal time, or, you know, that's sure. fine. Sure. But that was Thanks not so. going to be a consistent use. And if you recall, that was an issue I did go to the event with the union because we had an employee that tried that, and that's, that did not happen. Mm -hmm. So, um, and unfortunately, that employee is no longer with us, but that problem is not happening. Just so you know how you understand the issue of Fridays that I'm talking about, before you work seven hours, that's all they, they work 35 hours a week. It's now three and a half hours. If you take a Friday off now, you're only using three and a half versus your seven hours. If you bang out all the Fridays, you double your vacation time, right? On the other side of the coin, you use up your vacation time faster if you skip Tuesdays. So if you want to take the long week and a Monday's a holiday and you want to be off the Tuesday, it was about that's a long day. So you lose the, the, extra the half 10 day. hours, yeah, the extra half day there. So I'm not sure, to be honest with you, in the calculation of doing that, if somebody's mm -hmm. decided they want to take the long, long weekend, that they're not coming out of even. So mm -hmm. We, we did this as a we did it as a, an option and to review on a yearly basis. So yep. if we did it again, we would extend. Can we extend for one? Year we can out, offer at a period union. of time of one year yep. instead of the board doing something. Yeah. You can extend an offer to the union to extend the hours another year. Mm -hmm. That's but I have to go to impact mm -hmm. with them. I don't believe that that would be an issue. Um, or you could simply remember you can change town hall hours anytime you want to under management rights. Yeah. So, uh, uh, under the same breath, uh, I'll be honest with you, I think when we first, Ms. Cabral, uh, again, I'll talk specifically Ms. Cabral because you came in later, right. um, mm -hmm. there were some people that had complained when they show up on Friday, but that kind of dissipated after a couple of months of getting to know the schedule, and I'll be honest with you, I, I mean, unless people just gave up on complaining, but I haven't heard a lot of complaints, mm -hmm. I really haven't. It was ma mainly the first, I'll call it 60 days. Yeah. of the plan and then after that it kind of dissipated so it's not a it's not you know if, if people were complaining up and down to the board or to whoever I, I guess we would have to be looking at this under a different light but in in my yeah. opinion if there's not a you know everybody complaining I don't really have a the, problem with it. So Tuesday night started very slow but now Tuesday night is busy so I mean literally the first few Tuesday nights I'm thinking okay nobody's coming and now it you look up the clock is at seven o'clock because uh, we've had visitors um, yeah. Second of all, you can change. You can you can go for another year extension, or you can simply change the hours. It's up to the board. It's a management right. Yeah. So we just have to impact bargain the, with the union, which will be Mr. DeRoche's pleasure. In addition, one of the things that it taught me was we, right. That's right. <laughs> we need to do more online. And so one of the one of the things this taught me was, especially Kevin, in relation to some of the conversations you and I have had. You don't think about using the transfer station until the end of the week, and then you've run out of time because the town hall closes on Friday afternoon, it's fine. We need to provide a way to access the website, make a payment to town to make a trip over to the transfer station on Saturday um, to take advantage of our extended hours particularly. So we have a proposal to bring to the board and to the finance committee as part of the budget next year that would allow for online permitting and payment of fees to the town 24-7, 365. So that could solve that problem. Because really, if you think about it, you might think about it Friday afternoon, but when do you really think about it? Saturday, when you're ready to go, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah, and you don't want it. You don't want and so if we could provide us an app that would allow them to make the payment 
and show the phone when they come to the transfer station and we can do that so everybody knows at home mr noble is using the words transfer station it is our recycling center that we Thank are you. referring to transfer station to people at home like we have a transfer station <laughs> what are we transferring by so just uh, get ready your pig junk so it's, it's <laughs> just a good just, point just a couple of comments on, on my side right. right so you know ideally we'd have a 40-hour work week I think if we had a 40-hour work week, we could design town hall hours to open more than one night a week. So I sort of always, and, and as part of that, just sort of always scratch my head about why Tuesday was the night. It just, if I was picking a night, it wouldn't be Tuesday, but that's what we decided. But so we're limited, we're limited by the fact that the town hall work week is 37 and a half hours, which uh, prevented us from, you know, closing early Friday and and going later than you know going to six maybe a couple nights during the week and, mm -hmm. I, and I wish we had I wish we had done that, um, but I you know I guess in general nobody's complaining about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. No, I agree. nobody's no, but we're getting we truly are getting comments about Tuesday night, and when we we had tried another test two years ago where we closed on Friday. And we were open later on Tuesday and later in the weekdays. And when we discontinued that, I got a lot of flack about that, not not being convenient to the people and not caring whether we served them or not. But when I would say, oh, great, put this into writing and submit it to the Board of Selectmen. No. Okay, I don't want to be that, you know, I don't okay. want to be that. I'm telling you that there are people who make the comment to me about the convenience of Tuesday night who will not put it into writing. And in fairness, so I, you know, I have met people in the parking lot of Town Hall on Friday who were surprised mm -hmm. that uh, Town Hall was not open, and we've tried to address the, their needs as best we can. But for example, a person coming in to get a birth certificate on a Friday afternoon because their driver's license has expired, and they had just been turned away from the registry, I can't issue a birth certificate. I can't help you. Mm -hmm. so. Just just one more that I, I'm not sure I focused on in the past. So the shortening shortening lunch hours I mean if we hadn't done that that would have given us another hour that we could have done something with potentially during the week it's possible but I'm one of my concerns is most of our offices yeah. not all most are, are staffed singly okay so the building office would close for an hour not 45 minutes and so they come to see Jim and the office is closed and I would I, you know if they're gonna hang around I want them to hang around as little as possible yeah I want them to get so they come in, they don't have to wait half an hour, they might have to wait 15 minutes. Um, when we have people on vacation, I end up closing an office. When I have people out of the, the this week, for example, we're short-staffed in the mm -hmm. collector's office. I don't want the office closed any longer than I have to, period. And if we're open, if town hall is open, I think every office should be open. When town hall is open and the office is closed for lunch, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. Like I said, I, I haven't heard a, a big, big outcry of complaints. So if, if if the board decides to continue it for one more year, for all you folks that are out there in TV land and, and you're not happy with it, send letters to the board. It's the only way we're going to know. We're not call, line readers. Call, right? um, call. Um, you know, you have to communicate that with the board members. You know, you just I haven't, I just haven't really heard a lot of issues of complaints. So I'm just, no, either right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and people are somewhat getting used to the hours and you change it back for no apparent reason. Yeah, the reason why I would change it back mostly is because of residents' complaints, and I just don't have that in front well, of me. Eight of, probably I, have I don't have a lot of support, just so you know. Eight, so the little log book that, that we know put what? together and, is not and as substantial. And neither can there are a lot of support in the other direction. So the, the answer is an eight to four meant that anybody working a nine to five job has difficulty getting to town hall. Correct. Okay, so the one night a week, whether it be, you know, the question I have is I chose Tuesday night as opposed to Monday night because Monday night you get the holidays. So I didn't want to be, I didn't want to shorten, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't want to take the holiday. It's a little difficult to calculate the time and what's a paid holiday. And so I chose Tuesday night. It could have picked any other night. But Tuesday night was the night that most of the committees met. And now those that weren't meeting on Tuesday night are now meeting on Tuesday night. So planning board, board of health, board of assessors, board of selectmen, they're meeting on Tuesday nights now. Mm -hmm. This is working. Now, it's a minor amount of money for the overtime that we cover for some of our staff. It's minor, it's, a, it's not even a rounding error. So, but it has, 
made a more efficient use of our time. The log, the log book agreeing with Mr. Gasper is disappointing. I mean, Either way, when, mm -hmm. when we when yes. we talked about doing this, it was you know we knew we were going to come to this and we knew we were going to try to justify this and we said you know give us yep. give us a log of activity, help us understand what's happening here on Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. and, and the log book here is really. It looks like underwhelming. Un very underwhelming. For five months, either nobody nobody came in or nobody wrote nobody anything signed. down. It's so basically 20 signatures, 22 signatures over a 10 month period of time, which equates to two people I think it per comes month. To yeah. Either you need town hall or you don't. That right. if we were a retail store and we are open longer hours, we could count the dollars. We're not. You either need town hall or you don't need town hall. Mm -hmm. and there's arguments to be made each way, right? right. If, if, if as a private citizen and I need to do something in town hall, um, I would most people like to take half a days on Friday to start their weekend earlier. I would take Friday off and I would say I'm going to go to town hall and take care of my whatever bills I have to pay or whatever business I have to do, and I would do that on Friday afternoon when I was home. But that's out the window now. So there's arguments each way. Uh, I think the best way to judge it is based on complaints from residents. If residents want to complain, and we'll make an adjustment. You know, yeah, yeah. Yes. In the audience. Yes. Yes. Sir, want to yeah. approach the podium? You speak yeah. on this topic? Yes, please. Thank you. John Tobias, Harbeck Street, I believe you wrote a letter. Yes. 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 Letters in him. Yeah. I, for one, think it's about time they have evening hours. It's archaic how these cities and towns expect people who work out of town to get here before 4 o'clock. And I'll tell you, when seeing Mrs. LeBlanca here, when she got elected and she started evening hours and she was the only one, I would come in and be a line outside of four or five people waiting to see her on certain days, not every week. But I'd come myself and make three sis office, the Board of Public Works, Town Clerk, Board of Health. And as in my letter, I don't think I should have to take vacation time to get here before 4 o'clock. The stores are open late. The banks are open late. My dentist has evening hours on Monday nights till 7. So I don't know why. I, it was kind of nice that a cushion it took the forefront of setting the example for the other towns. Yeah, there's other towns that do it. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel bad for the poor people in New Bedford. they got to go during the day and pay for parking to go to the city hall. So I hope you at least give it another year, minimum, because I think it was a very good idea you gentlemen had. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Anyone? Um, I've heard no serious comments concerning. Pam, yeah, town clerk. Yes. As you know, I've been doing this. It'll be 12 years in June that I opened on Tuesday evenings. And the reason that I opted for Tuesday evenings was primarily because of elections and voter registration periods. Um, our voter registration periods typically are on a Tuesday evening um, or an election for a state or federal election is held on a Tuesday and the, the hours are required um, for the Board of Registrars to, to do the, uh, hold the registration period until 8 p.m. Um, so I was trying to be more consistent with what the state uh, was requiring. Um, I do find, um, Mr. Noble and I have talked, that I do find between the hours of 7 and 8, it's, it's usually extremely slow for me. Um, however, just today, at 2 minutes to 4, um, a gentleman called in, wanted to know when the water bills were due, and I explained to him that they were due yesterday. And he was upset because he missed the deadline, and he said, well, can I go in tomorrow? And I said, yes, absolutely. However, we are open this evening until 7 p.m. He was ecstatic. He could not believe that we had evening hours. Um, I do think it is something that needs more recognition, more publicity. Um, I know I, I've included it on every mailing that I do, letting them know that the town clerk's office is open. Um, I am mostly, I spend most of my time on Fridays at the office anyway, and I use that afternoon as my catch-up time. Um, and if it's quiet on a Tuesday night, it's a great opportunity for me to get work done, as it is for all of the other departments. Um, I just, I, I personally only see it as a benefit to the residents 
It was something that I've been very passionate about since day one, and I don't, you know, I don't see that I would be ending that. I think it's important for the residents that work out of town to be able to see a face and do business face to face and not have to do things through the mail, over the phone, or take a vacation day to come in. So it won't affect my office either way um, because I would still intend to keep the hours that I have. Um, but I think for the residents themselves, I think it is definitely a bonus for them to be able to, to deal, with, especially with department heads. Um, it, it's, it's nice to be able to see the people that are making the decisions um, and not having to deal with, with the clerk. Um, on a regular basis, they want if they've got a question about their bill, they're able to they're able to see that department head. So, I just I I'm a true proponent for it. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Long. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, so we've got uh, we've got two. You know, unless anyone has further comments, we have two potential motions, um, suggested motions, whether or not we want to return to what we did in the past or to approve the continuation of town hall hours as is for indefinitely for uh, a period of 12 months or another, another another 12 months look at it again um whatever whatever you're in favor of you could extend it indefinitely pending an annual affirmation from the board because one of the things i'd like to go to the contract with is negotiate the contract language and seal it up not having to do these one-year addendums mm -hmm. Yeah, but what's I mean in the in this specific language that the board has the authority to wipe this out? I don't, I anytime it wants. Anytime it wants, and mm -hmm. if you do it permanently, that's not going to be the case anymore. Oh no no, you always have the right under management rights to dictate the hours to collect You'll the bargain and reopen it up and all that other happening. Correct. This can was not out of the. Week? You can do that, but you'll impact bargain and the cost was is hundred thousand dollars. That wasn't part of the scope of it when we did that. It wasn't included in that bargaining. We had to impact bargaining the the, uh, the it, Tuesday. The provision, I believe, says that we have the right solely to write without impact bargaining to eliminate these hours. In in the addendum we wrote in the impact bargaining, we did say that we could discontinue it Correct. at the end of the one year, and we and we were just returning to the old language. Well, we went contract. back and forth on that because I I remember we had a conversation because we I did. We wanted that strong enough. We, and we, we wanted that strong. language. If we you wanted that to be part of the board's authority be without okay. impact bargaining. Right. That's so. correct. You didn't. You wouldn't have to do that. So, however you want. It. I mean, you, you can do this. I'll make a motion to approve the continuation of town hall hours and to authorize the town administrator to resolve any outs outstanding issues with the union to make hours extend the hours one year. Mr. DeRoche, is there a second? I'll second. Further discussion. Go. Now, by extending this, is, do we have to do impact bargaining again? Yes. Yep. It won't be really much of a problem. No. Because be, no. we already have a pro forma system of how we do it. Mm -hmm. So it literally, from my perspective, makes it very easy because I just take next year and write out the exceptions, literally, rather than having to say, in a, in a theory for a long term, mm -hmm. I can just write, this is specifically the days we will be closed. These are the payments we will make. And I could do it for the year October to October. So it's actually a very easy okay. addendum. By doing it by one year, you've actually made the job very easy. Okay. All right. Second. Motion second. Mm -hmm. um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. That passes. Um, just watching the time and conscious of the fact that we're scooping ice cream at six, so I'll just, I'll just point that out. But, uh, we've got a few things in the agenda to get through, and, we, and we've got an executive session. So, um, so uh, golf committee empowerment. In the interest of time, why don't we table that? Do you want to table that till next time? I think that, yeah, I think that we could talk about that for a little bit. Um, yeah, let's table that. Let's move that to the next agenda. Okay. Um, fire EMS contract approval. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to uh, to approve the fire and EMS. Department contract as presented. The um, the chief and I sat down. Mr. Nolan and I have sat down. We've gone through a bunch of different little changes of language that weren't correct in the first go around. Um, I think the only thing that's uh, important to mention is that the union and as well as management aren't really happy with the job descriptions 
that have been put contract, not so much the job descriptions. I think that's a work in progress for the future for the board. To that, that can be together. done outside of the contract, right? Yeah, I can. Well, technically it's part of the contract, but the both union and management has said that these are really bad. Okay. And so we will probably get uh, an addendum very shortly yeah. on changing the job descriptions. Mm -hmm. So you are approving them. The union has approved them as they sit. Okay. But nobody's happy. So, but we're willing that was to, a good negotiation. That's, that's correct. That's and, what it's supposed yeah. to. Happen. And so they and the union has said we'd really like to redo this. So would we. And we want to do it in cooperation with the union. So we'll come back to you with a proposal um, to change those job descriptions. And I'm sure that union and the union and the, and management they're going to work together on it anyway. So yeah. we'll have something you'll be very happy with. And I and I would like to just add for the board's um, thoughts and consideration that the. Um, they were a pleasure to work with, really. They were the fire department, and EMS, the men and women that serve um, in uniform and our fire and EMS were an absolute pleasure to work with. Um, I don't think there's been, been any discussion in all of the meetings that we had where anybody was nothing was in real meetings. bad opposing views, um, very mutual conversations. Um, the outcome of the contract I, I view as uh, very positive for the community um, as well as our employees. So. Again, I, it was a pleasure working with these folks. Um, they, they, we have great people over there, um, both men and women. Um, and I'm, I'm wishing you all the best of luck. We've, we've done some things. We've gone to a 24-hour um, work day, um, shifts and things of that nature, merging the fire and EMS. Finally, after all of these years, we finally brought the two together in one budget, in one union, in one contract. It was a lot of work to get through the two different contracts and make make amends of both contracts and make all the employees happy. I think we've done that um, very successfully um, without uh, a large burden to the taxpayers. I think this was uh, a great contract for both the town and both for the men and women who serve. It's very fair across the board, so I'm, I'm very pleased with that. Um, two questions, if I, if I can. Mm -hmm. So this is, there was a red line version of the contract distributed to us to be reviewed. Yeah, so, one, so uh, I have five. Of okay, I think so this. Is, I'm going to do my read. best. And so, here, so. so just um, so we've we've created a position of captain. Is that in, in anticipation of so succession? We had a we had a previous fire captain in in the department years ago. And I won't mention names, but um, we've kind of got rid of the fire captain position, um, and it was paid like a annual stipend. I think it was like five thousand bucks or something like that. Um, we've gotten over that, and we've so there's a there's a certain standard in which NFPA that NFPA, holds yeah. us municipalities to a it's a it's a chain of command. In other words, within a fire department, I'm not an expert on it. I could have the union guys and Chief Gallagher come in. So there's you know there's you know you get the chief, and then you have captains and lieutenants and everything else. And we've looked at that and said. You know, there was some discussion to bring in all these other titles, but looking at the town of Akushna and what the town of Akushna has done as far as population growth and things of that nature, the need of, you know, five senior <coughs> positions versus what we've lived with for the last 32 years, um, 50 years, whatever it's been, right, has been really fire chief. Um, so we, we reintroduced the position, if that was to come up after our chief retires, we know that he's given us some notion of three to four yeah. years will be then promoting somebody um, or hiring somebody for the f chief's position and then second in command would be fire captain. So we just basically put that in as a placeholder identifier and we actually we kind of negotiated where it would be. So we should hire for that position now? Or? We're, we're, we're not at this at this current stage. It's this there in case the board decides to do something in the next two to three years. It's okay. open. That it's, we, the, it's the already dictated. Previous contract had captain and lieutenants and some cockamamie way of paying them. So we eliminated the lieutenant position. We created the day captain's position. That's correct. Okay. In the contract and defined in the event that the Board of Selectmen chose to accept, to op, you know, take that option, yep. how that person would be compensated and what the duties of the day captain would be. So we've left your options open, but it's truly at the option of the Board of Selectmen. It is. Great. Mm -hmm. it is. Well, and, and the Board of Selectmen to propose that. So the, that's a, just a it's town meeting that creates the budget. That's and correct. just one, one more uh, question. So this shows, so the contract, I'm not sure, it's unclear on what the first year increase is from, it starts 7 one with a pay scale, then we've got 2%, 20%, 2%, 21%. 2%. So, so what's the jump from 18 the, to 19? The, 
the problem with that is we had EMS, I'll see if I can explain this right, EMS employees were at a different grade scale as our fire employees. So we had to merge the two because some of these individuals from EMS are senior in their, their time spent yep. with the cushion. So what we all did is we sat at the table, we looked at where those three members were in EMS. Okay. And we said, okay, where are we with the members in the fire position? And then we kind of co-mingled that all to try to make sense so that this person has been there five years, but he's not mad at this person that's been here seven years and they're at the same rate so of pay. So we merged the, merge so the pay that's scales. Pretty, that's why those two, the first column, as far as a percentage pay, I can tell you nothing. It was, it was, nobody was out in front at like 15, 20%. And none of that's happened. You can okay. see where the scale mm -hmm. starts. Um, it's actually... Um, very fair if you look at paramedic firefighter paramedics salaries. and everybody's a firefighter paramedic that's the intent that everyone is a that's full. the ultimate goal of that contract is if you're going to be full-time you will ultimately have there's a time frame which will be dictated by the chief I believe it states inside of there that you have to get your certifications for, for a paramedic but ultimately our staff will it will all be and have to be firefighter certified paramedic certified so there are like basics and then EMTs and things of that nature but there's only a certain time frame you can sit if we were to hire somebody as a firefighter paramedic there's a scale in there that tells you some of this yeah, stuff. You can't sit as an EMT. You can't have to progress. You would have you there's a time frame so like so let's use a one-year time frame mm -hmm. if you came in and we had this really phenomenal call person that was a firefighter for 20 years and and he's a EMT basic he would basically have 12 months to fulfill the obligation of becoming paramedic certified in, a, in order to be eligible to take the full-time job. Okay. No, but so the, in, the, in, the, the year one increases where any, any uh, you merge the positions, no sense of what those percentages look like. Or, or no, or no, no less than 2%, no more than like three and a half for one person. Yeah, I don't, so I don't, I don't think. Right. Well, but there was a, it's a, it was complex because you're merging two. very complex. You're merging two Just because of the two departments. We were very careful to make okay. sure that nobody took a hit. Yep. Okay, so in, you know, in a couple of cases, there was an adjustment made to work them into the schedule and compensate them. Okay. okay. And I know it's uh, an unusual year given what, correct. what's been And then in, we also took away some of the stipend levels and created quality assurance yes. awards. So in other words, okay. not just getting a stipend for, for having certification, but actually getting a quality rating that therefore you would be rewarded on a minimum of 25 calls and then the, the rating is done. So this is... The best way to describe this is uh, words from Kevin: pay for performance. That's so correct. It is. It's all. It's all performance as far as certifications go, and any additional pay goes. It's it's performance based, right? So they 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 have to meet certain criteria. We set the bar relatively high, um, especially when it comes to our quality assurance, which is not gauged by internally. It's gauged by an outside firm. So it's rather nice that that's being done, and we can't be kind of. The, the message can't be skewed in other words right so it's all everything's in place everything's in black and white there's no ifs ands buts about it and we, we actually created a couple of certifications that the chief there was a trauma one and I think there was a pediatric, pediatric one trauma that we thought was very um, critical in the way um, the town and in and, and health care is transforming those were two critical points of certifications that the chief had brought to the table and we agreed and said this is absolutely something that can better serve the community as a whole. I mean, in trauma is something that they need, and pediatric is also something that we feel would bring um, the level of experience of our men and women in uniform up to that bar. And if they hit a scene or an accident scene or anything like that, this they're trained to do these kind of treatments, and, and we're not going to be sued ever. So it's again, it's it's everything everything that's there. I think makes really good sense for the time. Mr. Mr. Well, my question was, who rates? The uh, you know the EMS and the firefighters. And you mentioned an outside firm. There is an uh, I forget the name of it. I just on the top of my head. It's a quality assurance. They literally go in and look at the quality of care. All done by ambulance calls where they show up at the hospital. Yep. So they they gather records from the hospital. When the ambulance shows up at the hospital, it's all about reporting. procedure. Did they follow this certain procedure? No, no, no. And they look at all the transcripts and from the, the second that call was put in until they delivered to the hospital till the time they return back to and the EMS center. And so in order to be raped, you have to have done at least twenty five calls. Yeah. So. Okay. The idea is that, you know, if you're on and, and the ambulance is rolling, is your incentive to get on that ambulance. Mm -hmm. 
and there's some circuit break language as well as for the 24-hour shift mr. chairman there's, there's some circuit break language if, if, if that scheduling doesn't work um, the board of select would have the right to, to rescind that and go back almost like what we just did with town all hours we have the right to rescind so mm -hmm. okay. without question so it works out pretty well could I suggest that it'd be a good time for a motion just uh, unless there are other issues that um, are appropriate to talk about I don't believe so mr. DeRoche any other questions no, or no, no. So Again, just in the, in the I feel kind of silly making the motion, but I don't want to do yeah. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the fire AMS the family contract as presented. You know, second. Any further discussion? It should be noticed that the fire union has already signed the contract. Okay, that's a good thing. Okay. Yes, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. That's the end of old business, new business, appointment of screening committee members. Could I suggest we table that also to the next meeting? I've talked with two of I the know. I've talked to Brian about holding so. this off. Yeah, let's, let's hold this. I've, did, I've got other people I've reached out to I've not okay. heard back from, so let's, let's hold that. Right. Um, under 7, uh, Department of Public Works, we had the Mass DOT Hamlin Street. Uh, we've uh, got the Department of Public Works. Uh, Mr. Ron Silva, uh, welcome to talk about line painting of town roads and a road list for street paving. And take all the time you need. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, five minutes. Focus. <laughs> focus. No, whatever. Uh, if you're late, you're late. Yeah. It's us. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys go. The, oh, she's good. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Is this something new? Well, that's, is that the thing for the line painting? That's just chapter streets? 90. Oh, that's a chapter 90. Oh, you already get the line painting? Yes. You want to start with the line we painting? We have the line painting, but we just right. received the uh, chapter 90. So okay. I guess we'll talk vaguely about that. But, yep. you know, we like to get mm -hmm. things ahead of time, not last minute. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, the line painting, we actually do this time of year, around August. Um, what I'm proposing is uh, add fog lines to these streets that are listed there. Hamlin, Hathaway, Keene, Lake, Leonard, Mattapoisa, Mendel, and Noya. Um, last year, um, two of the streets didn't have the fog lines on. They wanted to do the two new roads we did, which was Gammons and Quaker, mm -hmm. and they wanted to put them on by accident <coughs> for the line company last Sheesh. year. Yeah. Um, so I kind of like the you know the fog lines added to them. So I was Where, thinking this year, line? What is it's it? the white lines that go along the oh, side yeah, of the road. Okay. Right now we only got a single yellow that go down these ones, Hamlin, Nice Lane, stuff like that. So something that marks the edge of the road. Correct. Okay. Um, um, the one that's like three feet in, telling you if you're on me, yeah, you, know, yeah. you better you better pay attention. And you know, talking with the police chief and stuff, he says the you know it's adding good. the fog lines actually slow people down because it makes it feel like you're on a narrower. Mm -hmm. Streets now, or mm -hmm. what it is, you know. So. I, I, I like the I like the um, idea of the fog line. The, it says remove. Though, it says remove. Yeah. Why does it yeah. say remove? Oh, what do you mean? It says is that just the price? If we didn't, that's what you did. You if broke it out. Uh, broke it out of fog lines, it's or we take it out. Yeah, it's an additional four thousand dollars to add them fog lines to the streets. So if these are the bids I got from markings and highway. You'll see on the top. That's with them. That's with the fog lines if and you are these, down, these you roads suggested them. under our road management plan is that how we pick these roads or how well no we line paint every year i line paint all of them you know we do okay so these are every year we're going to do these same roads correct no. we line paint them the same no. roads yes no. you line paint them every year i line paint all these roads every year every single street the only way this it's middle it's road's called, not it's, on here it's called well that was just adding the 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 fog lines to these are the ones i'm just adding the fog lines to Oh, so the upper half is all line painting, correct? With fog and then these are the streets you would like to add fog Cor lines. Correct. To. That only have a single oh. yellow line on them now. So two separate beasts here. That's to do okay. the, all the town roads that have lines currently on it. This place yep. at the top. Yep. And then to add it, you are adding an additional four thousand bucks. Correct. Right. right. Thirty four thousand bucks. Put fog lines to these yeah. streets. For those streets, have so. just single yellow lines. So the okay. now. Okay. I make a motion to approve the line painting of the town roads to include solid fog lines on an additional six roads as presented. 
I'll second. Six roads. Can we? It's six, six roads. Can Can we talk about Hamlet Street? Though? I should have done that. But Hamlet okay. Street. What do we think? <laughs> Mine's far from good. We're going to smash roads and bridges. Like that. Well, again, that's now I'm just talking with this guy. It's actually going to be three years out before. Can we do something to provide? Well, that's what I was going to going to ask you. To, you know, you know, listen we to him tonight, and we definitely got to do something. I can put. Um, you know, now we have the paper. We can you know cut it out and patch certain sections so it's not so bad because this is some that just so crumbled I have to take it out and redo it you know so feels um, like right, that was well something. again well this you know, was I think you should do some patches on the road yep. but one of the thoughts you would say is why don't we do the two approaches or up to the two approaches of the bridge but remember those construction vehicles are uh, down there yeah. and tear hell out of that road yeah, they will. so I think at this moment just patch yeah. and just in a, in originally they were supposed to start this year, this year, you know, right. so that's yeah. why right. so just let it everybody's down. been on hold. So the line, and I don't want to put, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars into patching. But one, we didn't have the paper. Number two was like, you're going to throw ten, twenty thousand dollars at it, you know, of my road material budget. Yeah. We're yeah. Not, yeah. Gonna, we, you know, we're going to rip it up in a, another couple of years. We're going to have to do. Yeah, something. now we're definitely we're going to do something. It's a couple of years yeah. away. Paint the lines. Do whatever yeah. we need to do. Right? They're going to disappear in a couple of years anyway. So no big deal for the little bit of peanuts that that road's Correct. costing us. Yep. Just get it done, Dan. Do what you do. Yeah, it's actually it's than a half a cent per foot. Just so, even so make it better. It's really it's not right. Right. So we 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 got a pave, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna so just so use a quick so minute, Mr. Chairman, yeah, if you don't mind. Go, go. I'm gonna do with something for, for for you guys to all start thinking about, right? For the future, for the next budget season. So we got a paver right now, and the way the only way we're gonna do the roads is if we go in with our mini excavator, start tearing up town and everything else. So I'd like for you to put a presentation to the board for a grinder, so that we're not having to rip roads up all the tower up with a yep. excavator yep. and let's put a package together so that we can start doing real patching in the town of Akushna instead of the gumball patching where the guy jumps out of the back of the truck and uses a stamp or it drives over with the truck we have a roller we have a paver it makes sense for us to look at a small grinder yep. paver grinder that's a cool um, yeah. and, and price that so that the board can at least talk about that as far as articles go for the next town meeting that we're going to have kind of gate that up um, I think it would make a lot of sense. I think it would make your job a lot easier, Mr. Minot. Um, and it would make your work a lot cleaner, quite honestly. Yeah. Right? Correct. So, thank you. That's all I, I just throw out. Hey, we got a lot of nice equipment. I mean, yeah. that, that would complement the whole oh, yeah. show. Yeah. And we could do a lot better <laughs> no, yeah. management. Yeah. So, the overall plan for Hamlin Street over yeah. the next three years is to patch it. That's, is that what we're Basically, doing? yeah, that's all I can do, really. And even, that, like I said, again, with the paver now, I can at least do good patches. It's cut out a good section and, and paved instead of just, like you said, they've been just throwing, mixed right. in there and throwing right, a some of the sections. And that's just so... Some of the adults, sections yeah. from Main Street to the bridge. Yep, they have to be done. In a terrible shape. Yep. So, but so. that's something we do in house, that's not a big deal. So okay. Do you, think, do you think, think this season. because we can use Chapter 90 funds, do you think it would be wise Instead of going over there with a the mini excavator and ripping that road up, it would be faster and easier if we rented a grinder for now and just went in there and did oh, that I think check into renting a grinder. Yeah. Well, we used yeah. to have the 90s. Well, the thing right? is, you know, you, with grinding and milling, you're just not taking all of all themselves. That one, that road actually needs to be reclaimed, which is pulverize it so you're going to take down a foot that's going to be regraded right you know, right but we're not ready to, we don't want to do that because we don't want to waste that kind of money right now what i'm saying so if you just went down and you did a little grind yep. and then you smooth the surface for a few years until we're done with the bridge and then we discuss in a few years yep. the board should have ultimate pavement management plan on what we're going to do that whole road should be done correct that's actually on the pavement management plan if you guys it's a major done. it's a major artery right. in yep. the town it of Akushnet. Yep. this should right. be addressed we did london street lake street still in good shape yeah um, Peckham Roads been done. Some yeah. middle roads been done. So, so we really have to do what we did on Quaker Lane, take it right down to the dirt again, and correct, and build it up. When from you there. get that bad, and it's just it's it's, it's no, nice. you, you ain't gonna even it might be even tough to mill because you're gonna have four inches mix at minimum to mill. Because mm -hmm. if not, that milling machine will just rip it right up to the dirt anyways, and it, you can't do it. So um, middle road we want to mill, and we actually milled this section over here of Main Street, yeah. you know, from down all down to the Bedford down. We were able to do that. Mm -hmm. This was thick enough, so we were able to take out two inches and then put another two inches of top on. Okay, so it winds up being a lot cheaper, so you're not going through four inches of mix. You don't have to haul the material. You don't right. got to reclaim. Use your judgment, Mr. Yeah, Minard. We have so. to trust in you that you're getting the right decisions. You have the experience out there. All we're kind of trying to do is throw different ideas out there to get yeah. the best uh, results. Definitely a million, 
machine and cleaning would be real <laughs> a nice option. Yeah, so uh, this, 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 the streets you've selected, this all comes off the the, man, the roadway management plan. Correct. Which system? actually, I think Inter is probably is in there. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the years in eighteen. Was the first year that the did they tell was. us what streets to do? Or? Yeah, if you look at the 18 one, if you got, I got 18, 19, I think 20s in there. I gave it. You know, three years that we had part of that plan. Um, Gammons was in, taken care of. Uh, Quaker was taken care of. Nice Lane was not, and Moses Lane was not out of that first year. I'm still not uh, like Moses Lane. I don't think, in my opinion, on how that got on there, but it is way worse roads out there than that one so that's just, why that one's well, going hold. I know what we're, we're talking about. I'm seeing, <coughs> I'm seeing, I just, I'm seeing, I see my street out here and so I'm seeing this. Yeah. But I just, I think we need to, we need to, this list? We, no, that's not what I'm saying. It's a mess. It's a mess. But I just, yeah. I think it's important to understand it's the first time I'm seeing this and that we're doing this work based on what is being recommended by the party. We're not picking these streets ourselves. No, and it, we're kind of going off of this plan, but it, you can't deviate from it versus like one year versus the other. Roads get worse. Like, again, I'm proposing mm -hmm. Hathaway, which is in year 2020, which is a, a lot worse road. They got damaged since this travel poll was done, you know. Okay. So that's why one of them, and Nye's Lane, which was from the first year, I'm looking, that's the one I'm looking to mill. I'd like to mill that one, take two inches See, out. See, I look at Nice Lane, this company did this, right? So I look at Nice Lane, yeah, it's a total spot of me, and I could, I could give you a list of roads that are ten times worse than Nice Lane. Correct. But it's, it's all, the, the plan's all of it. It's, this is it's, main, it's, you know, dealing with the worst roads, and it's preventing your yeah. average road from becoming your worst, worst road. Yeah. So it's a little and bit I, of... I think a lot of this plan too was happening because we still, when we were going over this plan three or four years ago, whatever, um, you know, we're anticipating hopefully doing some water main replacement and sewer because it definitely is south end is definitely way worse condition. But we got hundred year old water mains on there, so we're really not looking to go spend chap and funding putting you know new asphalt on stuff that we should. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of different infrastructure. For the so that's why oh, when we're looking at this, we, Dan. Dan would I don't know if you ever received a copy. No, you have to get this from. I got one of the. I have a copy of yep. the roads where we we talked years ago and we had a plan for for the DBW. It was actually on Middle Road, the first three streets that are sewered and, and they have old pipe. So yep. we wanted to test and see you know how we would perform as a town to do these water and sewer infrastructure and do check um tar roads there's three of them it's wilbur homes yeah homestead yep homestead's homestead's one of them and there's yep. another little yep. street so small side streets where you're not on main roads with aku let's see if we can do what we're capable of doing before we throw ourselves onto a main road started started doing that that hasn't happened we talked about this <coughs> five or six years ago mr minot it's kind of been just gone and, it, and it's unfortunate because those roads are in terrible condition as well so when we look at paper management plan i think this board needs to use some common sense um, and have that dialogue with dan and, and kathy are saying what roads need water infrastructure what roads may be sewered in the near three to five years because once you tower road you can't touch that road for five years to know so there's all these different moving parts before we adopt any streets that we say go out and top it's it's good for us to go out and look for look at it ourselves too and use better judgment and say what are we going to do and how are we going to do it we have surplus water surplus we know we can do water infrastructure and things of that nature i think that's where we should be moving our dbw we have a great crew again same as our fire and ems we have a good crew at dbw um the men and women men all men now except for the, the ladies in the office so but they're not doing tar roads but um, they do a tremendous job. They're out there in the field. They're out there in the Well, they're putting stickers on back. They're doing that. You can't deny that. I caught both of the girls doing it. But we have a great crew, and we're we, I feel like sometimes that we're wasting our crew's ability and the time that we have with the folks that we have, the hard work and the experience level that they have. And, and we're doing certain things. I know that they're as important as our water infrastructure we talked about flint michigan in, in the past because of their water infrastructure and it, we need to start talking about our water infrastructure this town is decrepit with its infrastructure we need to start bringing in mr menard coming up with a plan saying what are we doing how are we going to do this and, and what's the time frame we're doing charge them with that mission and let's get well, the sewer done. plan the sewer plan we're going to have that so, conversation very soon let's right? get we got and maybe and, and maybe some water water replacement happens with that you're going to you're going to replace 
raise water pipe if it's 100 so years old, right? That's Common the conversation you have very shortly. But that, those are all things that are going to deplete us surplus. We're going to gauge that. Ms. Silva's phenomenal when it comes to numbers, when it comes to the department. I've worked with her numerous times. I mean, she is, she's, she's phenomenal. I can't say anything better about Ms. Silva. She just knows all the stuff and all the numbers. We need to get you guys focused on that and that you guys out there banging out. They enjoy doing it. I mean, Dan, you just did Margaret Street, the retention point. You guys want to see the work that these guys do? Go to Margaret Street uh, and look at the detention pond that they just ripped apart. You could, you didn't even know there was a pond there, and look at it now. I mean, it's, it's crazy the work that these guys could do. I don't want to waste the talent that we have. I think we have phenomenal talent. I'd like to put them to doing some bigger scale projects and save the taxpayers a bundle of money because that's what they, that's what they're here to do. Okay. Back to our roads, though. <laughs> <laughs> roads. I'm not discussing roads, are we? We still yeah, that's the roads. We're on roads. We're on roads. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay. So, um, um, so we've got the, we've got the schedule. And when is this half an hour? When is this? Well, I got to go up. You know, once the board approves what streets we should go on. I mean, again, I just you just got it. So if you guys want a little time here to look at this and uh, you know puts your thoughts to it, and it's it's pretty much again we're kind of using the paid management, plan, so we couldn't pick. You know what street? You know because this guy's I my think buddy. We're supposed and that's to stay out of it. What's the goal of the pavement management plan? Yeah. So this is actually, if you look at it, this is all part of it. The only one I'm kind of sketchy on is is doing nice lane, is because if we do start trying to do sewer in the next years, we're just spending money. What I got to figure, even that's even planning. You know, at 136 grand to co-plane that and 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 pave two inches on it. So mm -hmm. so again, that's. Could could I mean? Can I see the seminar that the, yep. the cut, we're gonna. When we've got the uh, when the plan comes in, when the sewer plan comes in, and the, I'm blanking on what it's called, but CW, 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 yeah, when that comes in, the goal is to get everybody, to get the board of health, to get you, to get the planning commission, to get the board of selectmen together to talk about what we do with sewer and yep. who does it and what areas of the town we target, what we can yep. we can take on. So I mean, you're going to be a key player in that. But if yep. you think. Well, we kind of nice lane is a, is a target area one right now. If you wanted it, the best bang for your buck would be that. That's actually area needs area two, needs area one is down the south end. Again, that one's going to need both water and sewer and down state there. Um, yeah. But go, but the goal, so, you know, you're gonna you're gonna help us decide where we yep. should focus those resources yep. on expanding sewer system. So yep. mm -hmm. if you think nice is an area, we area going, two would be the quickest. Then, yes. then maybe we shouldn't course. be paving knives. Right. That's but that why, would, that would that's be why the board should look yeah. at the roads being proposed, have some time to digest it. We just got this information. Look over our water infrastructure while we're there. We can't, we can't, I, I can't emphasize this enough, gentlemen. You cannot keep neglecting our water infrastructure. Dan will tell you, he's got the package. Look at the package, gentlemen. You have to do yourself a favor and look at We're doing no justice to our community by not replacing water infrastructure. It's sad. I can call you guys at uh, 2 in the morning in the winter. That'll make you think of that's, 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 that's a good example. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Could we have this? Well, you know, next meeting, September 10th. I'd like to have this on meeting. For some, so yes. this works starting soon? Or work well, for, again, it's going to go out to bid, and it's, it's, it'll be lucky to get late fall, or I can save this for the spring. I might be better off to save for the spring at this point. Okay, so there's no pressing urgency nope. on us approving? No, nope. you'll have more chapter 91. So why don't yep. we. Dr. Lamb, if you see that, September that's 10th, next meeting? Is that I, I, I was going to ask, you gonna you have that on the next one, but I, I don't know why we're going to go out 30 days I, I would see how miss noble is leaving us and and we have some conversations for an interim could we do a shot meeting on whatever the Tuesday 27th is, the 27th of, of august don't load up the agenda let's, let's figure out where the board's going we have executive session to discuss tonight we have a tentative agreement with an individual do we have a meeting on the um, we don't have a meeting what? I can't get that night. Well, then we just record the minutes and you do yeah, them some other like times, but video. I'm not going to hold up a meeting. Um, on what day? Tuesday, Tuesday the 27th. I can do that. All right. Uh, no. Kevin, uh, you have the whole plan, the whole pavement management plan? Do you want it? I don't know. Um, I probably have the pavement management plan somewhere, but I have all the old paperwork that you gave me with all the old water and suggestion. Right? Yep. So we need to get old water infrastructure, so identify where roads we're talking about the pavement management plan, and then say, okay, when we go to do this, we have to understand that you guys, the DBW, will be, be will be replacing water infrastructure at that time. That's why half the way road was you know a good one, and I doubt one was signed up. This, so I we we can get a couple of roads done now. We'll approve a couple of roads. Nobody says we're well, look. We're a couple yeah. of years behind. You're giving us three years that we're two years in backlog, looking in the rears. 
Yep. We're never going to catch up to all of this stuff. What I'm, what I'm asking the board to do is we, we have a pavement management plan. I understand that. But we have to look at the bigger picture. And I think that we're talking about a pavement management plan that is kind of it's iffy on how you implement that because some roads have gotten better and they're, and they're destroyed and you have to move to those roads. So the board's going to have to use some common sense, take a ride out there and look at it. But while we're doing pavement management, we also have to consider our water and sewer infrastructure. The total infrastructure of the town is, is at pot here, right? It's not just town roads. That's all. I'm very concerned. And I, I'm going to emphasize that until I'm gone, is infrastructure, we're, we're lagging, and a lot of municipalities are lagging, and I don't want to be Flint, Michigan, where my people are drinking contaminated water, or water pipes keep bursting in the middle of winter like you have to do, whatever day that was, it was bad, um, massive main break, that's all due to old infrastructure, it's, it's not good. Miss, uh, so Mr. So, no, no, no. Um, I'm ranting, but it's when, good when, um, when would you like this approved? I mean, these, these are your recommendations, I'm assuming. Yep. When, what's your goal to get this approved? Uh, it doesn't matter. Like I said, as soon as you guys move it, then I put it in forbidden. I mean, we want it, it, we want it sooner, sooner rather than later, yeah. right? Suspect. It, it just takes time. Like I said, I've got to advertise it for a couple of weeks. And, you know, it, it I mean, I'm willing to meet on the, the 27th uh, and make this fine. a yeah. Yeah. I think With the exception of nice. I think you're fine here. It's in, good, it's in conformity. I just, I just I had a question because I'm not, I wasn't involved in this uh, discussions previous. Uh, Needs area two, you say Nye's Lane. Is it all of Nye's Lane? It's well, it's, it's Nye's Lane. It's not the whole thing actually. Some of it's sewered at the top of Nye's Lane already. Right. right. Well, that's, that's a different. Right. Uh, um, no, 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 no. But it needs because we we have the town's program. I think it's like seven needs areas, I believe. So, number one area was over here and this is again this is all part of you know the water cleanup right. too, even at MS4 and all that stuff so it's um needs are one was over here down the south mm -hmm. end which is from because we're we got sewer at Pembroke so from there down to the Haven line mm -hmm. um, needs area two is actually from the police station correct right. all in street dowling and all in yeah. and to be sort of all the way up to Nye's Lane in that. So area. when you say Nye's Lane, do you go up Nye's Lane then also? Yes. Okay. Halfway? I, I would go, why not? That's all gravity. That would go all the way up. Go well, and get well, gravity nice. and can up there. The okay. whole road and then the side neighborhoods all okay. captured by gravity as well. So that needs Correct. area. Basically, yeah, well, just way. before, yeah, just, yep. it's okay. into a cushion a little bit. Like we get, like I said, we got sewer. Some even actually Kendrick's got sewer. A couple houses, so okay, um, it's a little off. And we, there's gonna be now. once okay. we get the. Right. Uh, those letters. The green light won't get out. Well, well the first thing is, <clears throat> right. yes. once that comes in, that's going to be, they're well, going to green light. Identify, that's get the point approval. Out what's gone. Okay. Shows all the areas, and then not Correct. necessarily, we could do three first, Correct. not do one first. Okay. Um, yep. So all of well, those. Well, not really. Can I, we, can I just say something? Yeah. Woodward and Curran is actually going out to the DEP, and they're actually just asking for them to approve needs area two at this point. Because these are one reason we were going to skip because it's the south end, which is the state highway, which would take us forever to get approval from them. So at this point, they are only going for needs area two. In, in the capture, and we talked about needs area one. The answer is pretty big, but needs area two is actually 300 and some odd residents, which is a third. You're going to capture 30 to 35 percent of your sewer users. We currently have 920 sewer users. Yeah, nine, almost 980. 980 now so we have call it a thousand right so you bring in 350 that's a third of your current sewer users so again once you bring that third on it what it does is it, it starts to tail that rate curve right so you can start giving those people the current users those current thousand users might see some relief where you may not lower the rate, but you're not increasing the rate at such a dramatic rate where you're just knocking them into the double pit, right? Can I, can I, just, can I just, I'm just gonna, let's bring it in. We, let's, we wanna talk about road paving first. So I, I def, wanna have a night where we all talk about sewer and definitely need to do that because that's important. But I suggest tonight's not the night to do that. Can, can uh, Mr. Gasper, your suggestion that we meet on the 27th, could we have a focus meeting on the 27th to discuss um, and what do, you know, your suggestions on the road and maybe Look what I can this. do is I can give you, I can get you all the info and so you have it prior to the meeting. I'll get you all the water main years, yep. all that stuff. And, uh, you know, a bunch Just of for these roads, roads then, so, Dan, just yes. do yourself a favor, right? Yep. So you have this big giant packet and I have it yep. somewhere, right? It's, it's yep. thick, right? It's like yep. half inch thick of paper. You, let's just go over what roads you have here. Yep. If these are the roads that we're... And I'll give you the years of the water means. And, and look at the years. So we know if we're doing water infrastructure, and this board could come to a conclusion and say, yep. we're going to go to town meeting. We're going to need, from town meeting vote, a, a motion of 
deplete surplus by a quarter of a million dollars depends on what the audit infrastructure. You got to get those numbers right, yeah. and we're going to bring down those reserves to replace water infrastructure. Oh, we're talking about what? No, just, yeah, yeah ro just ro roads. Okay. So let's talk about the roads and which, which roads can be done easily without yeah. hard to. Oh, without water. Without water, so okay. without, so we want to refer that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so these are the ones we can do without regard to you know water yeah, replacement, sewer replacement. Yeah, sure. And let's let's get let's get that stuff started. And then the sewer sure. summit. The sewer summit's one I wanted to do two months ago, but so we need to do. We need to yeah. do. We need to do it soon. Mm -hmm. um, I want to do that, but um, yeah, let's agree. focus. Let's get. Let's get, get a couple let's, roads. Let's get this started. Let's get this started. Out let's get started. So, um, 27th, yeah, gentlemen, that's fine. 27th, five to seven. Just, mm -hmm. just yeah, it might be just, late. Yeah, quick it's meeting. Focused on that one topic. It's probably be late. It's not a five. We got a three thirty meeting for about an hour. We don't. I mean, we don't. I just, I just want to get him started. Yeah. Five, 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 five thirty, five thirty, five thirty on the twenty seventh. Okay. I think it's important that we do that. Yep. And finalize yep. Mr. Noble's. Um, it would be actually it would be Mr. Noble's last meeting, official meeting, um, unless we call him in for something else because he's on vacation. You can call me anytime. I understand. Right, so I'll be here. Mr. Menard, anything yes. else? So, nope. Should, Mr. Chairman, are, Mr. We gonna make, are we going to make a motion to approve the uh, retaining clock? I did. Yeah. Oh, oh, we did. That's done, yeah. I think. Yeah, that, that was, was done. done. Okay. So yeah, the roads. Was the, roads. Uh, the roads, and we're going to hold the roads until the 27th. And I'll, just, get you guys, I'll get you guys some. Yeah, so, so look, look at the yeah. list and yeah. see these are, these are the ones we're going to defer because of other things. I'll give you the years of water means and I'll give you the list so you guys can decide what. I think what Mr. Cabral's alluding to, Dan, is he wants. It, he feels it's important that we get one and two of the roads paved this year. Yep. Instead of holding off with a bigger discussion of water infrastructure. Yep. So I think what he's asking you to do, right, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Yes, go ahead. Can you, just to make sure that I'm getting, yep, your, point, I'm yep. getting your point across, yep. right? Because the way I just read what he said is, let's look at water infrastructure. Let's eliminate any roads on here that need water infrastructure. Let's pick, if you have 10 roads, yep. pick one or two roads that we can do without disturbing water or sewer infrastructure and get over and get it done this year, right? Okay. Yep. The water yeah. infrastructure. Yeah, or as, many, as many as you, as many as, the, as many as are on this plan okay. that are not, uh, there's no water, there's no sewer, or, or or the water and sewer are fine and we don't have to touch them for okay. Right. Okay. 20 years. Perfect. So there's going to be some water and sewer lines under some of the roads, but you know the infrastructure there is good and we're, yeah. we're we can pave the road and not worry we about stuff this. that's been um, done. I gotta go backwards. We made a motion uh, for the fog line should be for eight roads, not six. So can we just acknowledge that that eight roads. Eight, eight, roads, eight, roads, eight roads for fog lines, not six. Thank you. Fog lines on additional eight roads. Eight roads right. To include fog lines on eight roads, not six. So our motion was incorrect. So eight roads. We don't we don't have to everybody's fine, everybody's fine with that. Everybody's fine with eight roads. Eight roads. So town administrator's report. Mr. Minardi, you all said I'm sorry. I'm good, I'm good. Thank you. All right, I'm Ms. Silva, you good? Yes, thank you. Two quick things for you. <laughs> the road naming committee has voted to drop the name Blaze Drive. Okay. I had reported to this earlier. And it's now going to be part of Margaret Street. It's still a private road where Blaze is currently. And so Margaret's a public road till it gets to where the marker of Blaze is. Then it's still a private lane. And then it will go to Allison when Allison is built. And then at some point in the future, you will be asked to accept both the end of Margaret and the new Allison Road as part of um, the road acceptance. So yeah. As meeting. an accepted road. So yeah. we're going to do that effective September 1st. So Blaze Drive will be abolished. All those people with new addresses. Two. Oh, two. Two. There's two, two, people. two people. Two people. Are you okay with that? They're, they're fine. <laughs> they get to buy a new house without actually moving. <laughs> do, you need so, a vote? do we need to vote that? You don't. No. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to uh, tell you, the MSBA, the Massachusetts School Building Assistance Fund, meeting for the schools and the town and the town clerk and the, the facilities manager is scheduled for August 20th. We're preparing the paper to submit for our grant proposal. Uh, that's moving along and that will be in before I depart. That's the roof. Extra roof. Basically, the roof of the yep. school. I want that done before I was too important. Mm -hmm. um, and those are those are the only things I can pick off in the light of the time. And I know you guys want to go and just oh. scoop ice cream. Uh, uh, there's a selectman announcement and there's a executive session as well. Perfect. Mr. Naroshi had something? Uh, just the price of the roof is estimated at 
what was that, a million and a half or something? So the grant is going to pay about 50% of it? It would pay about 57%. We're talking closer to five million. So, you know, we'll have to come up with money, you know, our share of it. So I have a plan, don't worry. Um, so yeah. so I have yeah, a plan. So I. Yeah. I, I mean, to be honest <laughs> with you, I mean, first of all, the, the first thing is to get a, into the funding thing, and then we get a much more serious price. Because once I know I've got the 57% financing for the actually go out for a proper bid and get a solid number. Okay. And then we go to town meeting and we decide how we're going to come up with the money. Mm -hmm. I'm suggesting that Mr. Gasper just let, write a check. Okay. So, so you know, we'll name the school enough. after him. Um, yeah. So, in any event, just what I and wanted. also, can point out you were in executive session last Friday. You came out of executive session. You announced that you were willing to sign a contract with Mr. Pecos. I have that one ready to go. The board has previously been circulated a copy of that. You can sign that tonight mm -hmm. if you so desire. Um, you voted to do it. You've got a successful con contract with it, but you've now, and you voted it in public session. So you're fine, except we're not on TV at the time. Mm -hmm. So you might want to just talk about the fact what we're doing there so that it's in the public environment. Want me to do that? Yes, yeah, please. Let me do that. All right, under Selectman's announcements. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mr. Noble has announced that he's leaving us. His last day with the town of Akushnet will be August 29th or something like that. Yep. Um, so in response to that, uh, Board Selectman voted to um, to nominate, no, to select, what's the word? Our, our chief financial officer, our interim, our, our um, chief financial officer, our director of finance, Julie Hebert, as our interim town administrator. I'm looking for the words for the titles. My, I, I know exactly what you're doing. So um, at our interim uh, uh, town administrator, we're very happy to have you. We need to uh, finalize the terms of our agreement uh, with Ms. Hebert to, to um, and hopefully she'll take that position. Um, we are, uh, we've also had discussions with Kevin Pecos, who was here at our last meeting and talked about a, a plan to embark on a search for a permanent town administrator Correct. for the town of Akushan. He's presented us with a, uh, or, or we drafted proposal. a proposed agreement with Mr. Pecos um, um, as to what his services would be, what we'd pay, what the, you know, what that process would look like, and we, we, um, we've got that document that's been circulated. Um, I do want to talk some more about the, you know, what that process is going to look like. We talked about a screening committee um, and people that would be appointed to that screening committee, but, um, you know, we need to talk about whether or not we're going to take that process forward and how we're going to do it. Um, happy to have uh, Ms. Hebert as, uh, as our interim town administrator and, and uh, looking forward to working with you on that. So. Um, we have an executive session schedule. Do we have time to do that? How important is the ice cream? You want to wait until uh, September 20, uh, August 27th, whatever. Uh, well, part of the discussion is uh, Ms. Hebert's contract, and she's yeah. starting September 1st. So um, August 20th, and he's leaving. a little late for yeah. ice cream, I think. Yeah, I ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. Oh, they, and they don't have strawberry. You hear that, Julie? Mm -hmm. You're they, more important than I Well, be, and they don't have strawberry, <laughs> so, so there's that. So, um, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> okay. So no, we need to we need to get there, but we need to have the executive right, session. So, can we reach out to the library and let them know we're coming and working? I'm be there at quarter past. We'll be there ASAP. I'm out but, sure. um, could I get a motion to go into executive session under the general law 38 section 21 A2 to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiation with non-union personnel, interim town administrator, contract wage and classification as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining and litigating position of the public body. And I will declare and we will not return to public session. Or will we? We will not. We will not, we will not return to public session. Vote yes. Motion, Mr. DeRoche, yes. Motion, Mr. Gasper, yes. yes. Mr. Corral, I'm a yes. We are going to executive session not to return. Okay. 